next up, we're going to talk a little bit more about this idea of talking to R and some different ways that that, that that works. So the first thing I wanted to talk about, we've talked about function calls. It turns out that you don't have to call these just one at a time. You can compose different function calls and it will evaluate those that are kind of more inside to get to those that are outside. So that sounds a little bit maybe like a, an odd idea. So let me walk you through how that works. So let's say that you wanted to first use the paste function. The paste function will take the two arguments, these are two character strings, and put them together into one longer character string. So we want to paste these together and then take the output, which we're assigning the name message, and print that. So you can see here that we've got a series of, of different expressions. You could do this all in one line of code, all in one expression, by nesting one of these functions inside the other. So you can put that paste call, the function call right here, and you can see it's got the, the parentheses surrounding it. You can put that as the argument for one of the formal arguments for um, the print function. Just like when you're doing math and doing um, expressions there where you have different operators like addition and the multiplication, um, you evaluate from the inside out. So we'll break this apart, but R will evaluate this innermost expression first, the function call that we've put there, and then it'll move to the outer one. So to break that down, we've got the full R expression right here we were just looking at, and we can break that down into a first function call that's nested inside, and then the second function call that uses that first function call for the values for one of its arguments. So what R does is first it does that first function called the nested one and runs paste hello world. The result of that is a single character string instead of those these two separate ones that we started with. And then next it will run print replacing this part with the output from running that first function. So since the output was hello world it runs print with the argument set to hello world. The next thing I wanted to talk about is R scripts. We've been using the console so far, and that's really helpful for having that interactive type of conversation with R. But um, a lot of times you don't want to repeat yourself each time you open up R. You might have come up with a plan for how to work with your data that you want to repeat the next time you, you open R. So you can use what are called scripts for that. It really is like a script for a play or a movie. It allows you to write down the your part of the conversation and replay that over and over. So an R script is really at heart just a plain text file where you can write down and save your R code. And then by, by doing this, it improves the reproducibility of your code, which is a, a key concept we'll be talking a lot about later. The other thing is this becomes something that you can share with other people or you can share online. It, it really becomes a file where you've recorded your thought process of what you're doing with your data. So RStudio has as one of its panes in kind of that window system an R script. And so let's go in here. If you would like to open a new one, there are a couple of ways that you can do it. One is you can go up to File, New File, and then R script. And the other, there's a little plus sign here. This is for new files, so you can open it there. You can see that's opened a new pane for me right here. I've still got the console, but now I have this new space I can work in as well. So often you might want to save all of your R scripts in the same subdirectory in a project that you're working on. So you could use a, a subdirectory name like R, just uppercase R by itself, to save it. And for each of these files, the file extension for an R script will be .R. So that's what you'll see at the end of a file. And if somebody sends you a file that ends in .R, uh, you can be pretty confident that it is an R script. So there are a few ways you can run code once you put it in a script. One is that you can run it line by line. And there are a few ways you can do that. Um, there's a button for that that I'll show you, but also you can do it with a keyboard shortcut. It's command return. I put that just with R here, but it, it's not the letter R, it is the return. 
uh, a key on your, your keyboard. So let me give an example of that. So we could define as an example a vector with the numbers 1 and 3. So right now I have my cursor on that script line. Here is the button that runs. So if you click this you can see down here in the console that it's run that expression. And now if we look at the console, we can see it's defined. The other way that you could run this is you can do a keyboard shortcut. And if you scroll over the this run button, I think sometimes it will show you what this are. Oh, no. Yeah. So right there on mine, it's the command and then a carriage return. So if you put your key there and do that, then you can come down and see again. It has brought it down to the console to run it. The other thing that you can do once you have lots of lines of code in your script is you can do what's called sourcing the script. This will run all of the code in the script. And for that, there's a source button right up here. There's also a code in R called source, so down at the console if you have the, the file name for the, the um, R script that you're running, you can use the source code to run there at the console. So just as a tour of, of this idea of a script, there is a button where you can save your script as you're working on it, and then that way you can open it and reuse it later. We already looked at the run button and the source button, and a few features of how you can use a script. First of all, you can define expressions in the regular the regular way, but you can also spread an expression across several lines. And um, this will all be run as one expression when you do that. That's really useful for helping to structure your script so that it's easier to read. This is rare, but if you really want to, you can put two expressions on the same line if you separate that with a, a semicolon. It's usually not recommended, but it is something you can do. The last piece is you can add code comments into your script. And I've shown an example right here, and we'll talk about that more in the next few slides. So sometimes when you are writing up your code, you want to leave yourself some notes for what you are doing or for other people who might read your code later uh, to remember exactly why you're doing specific lines of code. So a lot of programming languages will have what's called a comment character, and what happens is when you have that character, the programming language will ignore it and anything else on that line of, of the um, script. So in R, it's the hash symbol right here, and so anytime you have a line in a script that starts with that, you can put whatever note you want, but R will skip over that as it's evaluating everything. So if I put in code, don't print this, but print this, and then try running all of it, it will only print the second part. So we can look at that here. So I put in my comic character, and we'll say don't print this part. And then we'll say but print this. And now if we highlight all of this and come up and run it, if you look down here, you can see that it's gone through but has not evaluated the part that was a comment character and it's only evaluating the part that that does not start with a comment character at the beginning. So a last piece, when you close your R session, um, it will get rid of any of the objects that you had defined when you were there and any of the, the libraries or packages that you have loaded. You have the option sometimes to save the history of your R session so those pieces will come back in when you reopen. It seems like a good idea on the heart of it, but again, in this class, we're moving towards ideas of reproducibility, and not just reproducibility for yourself, but reproducibility for sharing the files that you've written with other people and those other people being able to rerun and understand everything about what you did. So for that, we really want to start with a fresh session every time so that we have encoded in the files that we keep in that project everything we would need to redo the full analysis in it. So I recommend that you do not save the data that's in your R session or the history of your R session when you close RStudio. 
Um, and so one thing that you can do is you can set uh, some of your um, global options to change that so you don't keep on being asked that every time you, you um, close your RStudio session. So I've already made this change, but this is where you want to do it. And this was in tools and the global options. You want to make sure that the option to restore our data in your workspace is not clicked and that saving the workspace our data on exit is set to never. And then in the history, you want to make sure that you do not have checked this always save history.